The Yashica T4 was a bad boy high-end point-and-shoot camera that was shot by the likes of dodgy as fuck Terry Richardson. But don't let that put you off. The Yashica T4 may be one of the best point-and-shoot cameras ever made, but Yashica kind of said, let's forget all the fancy dials, the exposure compensation and the nice build. We're making a plastic point-and-shoot camera with a Zeiss lens. With that 35mm 3.5 Zeiss lens and a 0.35m focusing distance, auto everything and a pretty quiet shutter, the Yashica T4 is up there as one of the best point and shoots made. It's kind of the step between the Olympus Mu 2 and the Contax T2. The T4 has shutter speeds from 1 second to a 700th of a second. The lens has four elements in three groups with active three point infrared AF. And the special lens coating makes for great colors and contrast. It's not all roses though. I'm gonna talk about some of the problems with the T4 a little bit later on in the video. Of course, I had to take the T4 out for a spin. So we headed towards the Welsh mountains, dodging cyclists, sheep, and slate and we found ourselves in Snowdonia. The first and easiest thing to notice about the T4 is that it's probably one of the easiest film cameras to use. Loading it with film is as easy as it gets. You just open the back up, put your film in, pull a bit of film across to the red tab and close your back. Otherwise there are barely any settings on the camera. You can use the self timer, you can change the flash settings, and otherwise there really isn't much to it. You can half press the shutter button in order to lock the exposure or lock the focus, but pretty much it's as simple as that. Some people think of that as a negative, but to me, this is one of the key things that makes the Yashica T4 so good. It's an effortless camera to use. You don't have to think about anything, you can just shoot it intuitively. Not only that, but the lens is so reliable and sharp that you don't have to worry about nailing focus either. I shot two rolls on the T4 and I think I missed focus on just one of them. When it comes to focus, if the red light is showing, you haven't got focus. If the green light is showing, you have got focus. It's that simple. One thing I love about a really good point and shoot is that you can take really good pictures without having to think about it. That suits me down to the ground. I just love having that kind of intuitive camera that sometimes you can end up getting some way better shots than if you were using a better camera, but that was less intuitive. You can literally turn the Shika T4 on, take a picture and then turn it off again within like five seconds. Personally, I really love the way a lot of these shots look and feel, and I think that's largely down to the Zeiss coating. It's hard to put your finger on, but you know you're looking at better than average point and shoot pictures. Generally, it's known for being sharp and rendering colors really nicely, and I'm pretty sure I can see both of those things in these pictures. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, you should definitely consider subscribing. Most of my viewers aren't subscribed and it helps me to make better videos for you guys. Thanks a lot. Ooh, one shagging.
A weird aspect of this camera is that it's really quiet when it shoots, but it makes a really weird noise. Kind of sounds like Marge Simpson when she's angry or something. But it definitely makes street photography and things like that a lot easier because it's not super loud, it's quite low key. For this trip, I shot Portra 400 and Portra 160, and I would probably suggest that you shot something similar with this camera. It's a pretty high-end camera in a way, and I think there's kind of no point in wasting your shots. You may as well use really good film with it and get really good shots with it. That being said, Kodak Gold would be fine if you wanted to just take day-to-day -day pictures, or something like Kodak Tri-X if you were using black and white. In my opinion, the T4 is definitely best as like a daily carry, something that you can fit in a pocket or as a bit of a sidearm to your main camera. It's ideal for capturing those one-off moments like your friend vomiting into a bathtub or a Tory party member doing a Nazi salute. It's intuitive and it's quick. It's not the worst option for street photography. Obviously you don't have any settings or different lenses that you can add to it, but if you want something that is intuitive and that suits your style, it's a very good option. The only thing that really gets in the way of all this is the massive price tag for it. For the same amount of money, you could be buying something like the Nikon FM2 with a load of lenses or the Pentax LX or something like that. Obviously, those aren't point and shoot cameras, but you catch my drift. I did mention that the T4 has some pretty common problems. One of the biggest issues that I've found is that the autofocus system can just completely go to shit. I'm not saying it's like super common, but it's one of the most common things to happen for a T4. Otherwise, a kind of annoying aspect is there's a small light leak that can develop in the foam that surrounds the lens. This foam isn't really easy to sort of fix and it causes like a very small light leak in the top corner of an image. It's not the end of the world, but it's not ideal when you're spending like 400 odd quid on a camera. Also, like most point and shoots, the T4 can just die. It's an electric point and shoot camera and sometimes they're just done. Often this means it is over for your T4 because it's really expensive to fix these cameras and sometimes just impossible. That's not everything. This is a plastic camera and while that does have its pros in that it's small, compact and light, it has its cons in that if you drop it, there's a good chance something's gonna come off it. When you consider the cost, it's not even as durable as the Olympus Mu 2. All that being said, I still really like the Yashica T4 and I really enjoy shooting it. I love being able to just flick open the shutter and that's it, you've turned the camera on. I love being able to just press the shutter button and that's it, you've taken a picture. Personally, I really enjoyed the photos that I've got back from it and they are really up there in terms of quality, especially for a point and shoot camera. Obviously, if we're comparing it to an SLR, they are not the same, but you know, apples and oranges. There's something to be said for being able to shoot intuitively while also being able to use a Zeiss lens. If it wasn't for the overhyped price, then this would be a really good option. I still think it is a good option, but maybe not if you're paying the full price. So I guess it depends what you need. If you need to be able to shoot intuitively, then it's a really good option. One of the only downsides on that intuitive side of things is that when you turn the camera off, it forgets all of your settings. This is a real frustration with a lot of point and shoots, and that includes the Olympus Mu 2. 
you turn it back on and the flash is on again. It's really unhelpful if you're sort of like a street photographer or something like that. But on the flip side, if you wanna be able to take really good high quality photos, then you probably want something that is not a Yashica T4. While the T4 is one of the best point and shoots, it's not really one of the best film cameras. For the same amount of money, you might want a really good SLR or a really good rangefinder, and you'd be able to take better quality shots and you would have much, much more control over them. Personally, I think it's a great option as a second camera. That's the way I view it. So there we go. If you enjoyed this video, then I'm pretty sure that you'll really like my next video right here.